OK, let's talk printers. Um, Unix has a long print history um, since, like most operating systems, since day one. Um, and as you know, with Linux or Unix, when there is one way to do something, there's ten ways. Um, as you saw from in the last chapter on X Windows, there were there are many, many different um, desktop environments that you may choose to use. Well, like, and indeed, there are two different versions of X Windows you get to choose from. Well, with printers, there are a number of different print systems that have been used over the years in uh, Unix and the Linux environment. The original system was developed at AT&T back in the 1960s, 1970s. And it, um, um, I guess we'd call that LPD. And they could use commands like LP and um, LPQ, LPRM to manage their queues. You used LPD to send a print job to the printer and LPRM to remove a print job from the print queue and, and so on. Um, when Unix was then in its early days, when it was shipped to uh, University of California at Berkeley, they did not like this print system. And they came up with yet another print system. And they changed the command somewhat. So instead of using LPD to, uh, I'm sorry, LP to print a file, they used LPR. And likewise, some of the commands were similar to the commands originally used, but different. Um, just as a um, sidelight here, LP, I think, stands for line printer. Since the earliest printers uh, printed one line at a time, and um, they were called line printers. Um, and the command has stuck. Um, later, the Berkeley system and the AT&T system kind of merged together, or mer came together much closer. And um, once again, and so most of the commands, most of the print systems were made so that it would use either command set, either the Berkeley commands or the A original AT&T commands. So today, from almost any print system you use from Linux, if you want to use LP to print, you can use LP. If you prefer to use the LPR syntax, you can use that syntax. Either command will print just fine. Um, and they, the syn they both refer to the same print system. Um, and both command sets are supported. Um, and by and large, Unix eventually went back to the AT&T system using the LPD system. Um, most of my Unix experience uh, for a long, long time was using the LPD system, which the book describes a little bit in the beginning of Chapter 10. Um, it was a little hard to configure. It was a little hard to bring printers up. But it was a very flexible system. And um, I liked it because while it was a little hard to configure, a little hard to bring printers up, it tended to be relatively easy to use if you had a non-standard print application, like you wanted to write your own device driver, or you were, you know, because maybe you weren't using a standard off-the-shelf printer, but you were using some sort of a um, 3D, wax, uh, 3D plastic or wax printer that you had built yourself. Um, or in fact, what we sometimes use the LPD print system for is we wouldn't put a printer at all any place on. We use the print system to queue jobs to do huge computation tasks, a little like a batch system, where we really didn't want a lot of these systems to be uh, jobs to be running at once. And we just wanted to run them one at a time as they came to the top of the queue. And 
one way of doing that is to get a batch, a batch system. Um, another way of doing it, and another way kind of doing that is using like the AT command or the cron command, but they don't really work for that because they're more like for scheduling jobs. What I really want in this sort of application is you want to be crunching all the time on a big, big job, but you want to crunch on basically one or two jobs at a time. You don't want to be doing 20 at a time because that will bring the system down. And you don't want to schedule them in the cron sense of the word because you just want to do one after another as they finish. And uh, one way of doing that is actually to use the printer queuing system and then to write software that sort of takes the place of the print driver that is your number crunching software. So sometimes we use these print systems for things that don't even have output. All they are is to crunch numbers for us. Um, An LPD system worked really well with that. However, it was hard to configure, so they came up with a, another system called CUPS, Common Unix Printing, or Common, yeah, Common Unix Printing System. It's called CUPS. It's much, much easier to use, and that's primarily what's used today. Quite frankly, I don't know it as well as I knew the older systems because it works so well, you don't have to know it real well in order to be able to use it quite competently. Um, and I'm not quite sure how I would go about using the CUP system if I was going to make um, use my print system as a computation system or as something really non-standard. Um, looking at it, I'm sure one could do it. It's still a matter of just kind of replacing the device driver with the device driver that you write yourself that does the computation or does the specialized print task. But um, but I've never done it and um, probably never will. Um, I would, if I was going to do that sort of thing again, I, I would almost be tempted to go back to the LPD system. Um, uh, I don't know. The CUP system actually looks pretty flexible uh, if you dug into it. And um, OK. Um, so let's play a little bit with the um, system. The system on my system, uh, the print system I have installed on my system is indeed CUPS. And CUPS on almost all systems has a, it's built into the user interfaces used for systems administration. And the truth is, they work pretty well. So I recommend using that to install your printers. Um, and then I'll show you another way of doing it as well, which is to use the CUPS um, graphical user interface or min menu system or whatever they call that. But let's go down here. Let's just take a look at what, how the printer system works in, 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 in its basic form. Uh, if I was to install a printer, well, I'd get into my systems administration user interface, which on my SUSE system is Yacht 2. Um, it, it will be different on depending on what distribution you're using. I would then probably go to hardware. Under hardware, it says printers. Um, under printers, it gives me a list of my printers here. These are printers I already have installed. Let's add a new printer. I type the add. The add goes out and finds my printers for me. Um, and it will search the system looking for printers. So in this case, my printer, in order for me to find it, it had better be turned on and plugged into my computer using USB or whatever is available. Um, if I look here, I see that there is an a new printer. It's an Epson Stylus RX620 or something. If I look over to the edge of my desk, yes, indeed, there is an Epson Stylus RX620. 
So, um, and then it will come up here and let me choose the print driver that I want to use with that printer. Uh, suppose I don't like the RX620 for some reason, um, or it doesn't come up with the right printer. I can basically search, and it will find more printers drivers for me. Um, you'll see that there are actually quite a few Epson stylus printers drivers here. Let's just look at Epson printers. Oops. And um, you'll see there are lots of Epson printers here. If I was looking for HP, well, you'd see there'd be even, you know, lots of HP printers. Let's just do a search, period. Um, OK. And there I see there's printers for Alps, Alpolo, Canon, Epson, Gestner, HP, Lan well, the, yeah. Name your printer. It's in this list. Now, occasionally your printer won't be in this list. What you do then is choose a model that is close to the one you have. Choose a model that is, you know, like before the one you have, but um, 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 but 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 as close as you can get. So let's cancel this. Let's go back, add that printer again. It comes up with two choices for my print drivers. I don't know which one's best. I'll choose this one. Then it asks me to name my printer. Uh, the default name is down here, and it is a long, ugly name. I might actually try to choose a shorter name than this. Let's just make this capital R, capital X, um, 620. That's a name I think I could remember. So uh, maybe I'll make it with a, a dash 620. Dash 620. And then we'll do OK, and it will install my printer for me. Oh, maybe it doesn't like a dash. OK. It didn't like a dash in my print name, but um, uh, when I took that out, it's installing my printer for me. And in a moment, I will have a printer installed. And this is a good, easy way to install your printers. Um, Every operating system has a GUI. And because the CUP system is so easy to use, the um, uh, system that they give you for installing printers works pretty pretty well. Um, and um, so that, that would work. Let me see. I guess I did install that. So I've got to continue. And that installs my printer. Alternatively, CUPS has a web interface. And so I could go to the web interface. And the way you get to the CUPS web interface whoops, is you type, um, get into your web browser, type localhost colon 631, which is the uh, port number for the CUPS print system. And we're looking at the CUPS print system on our local host. That will bring up something that looks like this page here. Not terribly interesting. But if I go over to um, administration, then it will allow me to add printers to manage the printers I have. And you can see the RS620 is a printer on my system. And to do all sorts of things from the um, from the web, from a web interface. And this is a good way of handling your printers as well. I usually use, oh, I usually either use the uh, Yacht interface or else I use the um, command line interface more often.